Welcome back. We have some monster breaking news, including a future Hall of Famer. Adrian Wojnarowski still on the desk with us. What more can you tell us? Uh, Cassidy, a, a big one. The <laughs> Washington Wizards have agreed to send Chris Paul to the Golden State Warriors for Jordan Poole and two future draft picks, a first-round pick, a second-round pick. And listen, this is uh, the, the completion of that Bradley Deal trade, Bradley Beal trade with the Phoenix Suns. The Wizards have been looking uh, for a situation to move Chris Paul onto. And now the Warriors step in, bring in Chris Paul uh, to play with uh, Clay Thompson, obviously Steph Curry, and move out Jordan Poole, who will start a new four-year $140 million contract extension this season. And this is a Warriors team that has some difficult financial decisions to make, and they made one today. And moving on, uh, Jordan Poole to the Wizards, uh, this is certainly going to give uh, Golden State an opportunity to have a little more breathing room and working on a contract extension with Draymond Green, who they simply do not want to lose uh, in free agency. And now Chris Paul, who wanted to play very much for a contender. Uh, his conversations with the Wizards, Michael Winger, their president, his agent, Stephen Human, they've been working all week to try to find a landing spot uh, for Chris Paul. And it is the Warriors uh, who now bring in this future Hall of Fame player as they try to maximize this window um, with Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Draymond Green, and certainly Washington now uh, gathering up picks gathering up young assets and they're really in a full rebuild now yeah before this trade the Warriors payroll stood at 186 million Mike Dunleaver Dunleavy was promoted from assistant GM to replace Bob Myers six days ago do you have any insight of just how busy he's been in, in his new role yeah Mike Dunleavy Jr. this has been a conversation in Golden State again I think trying to find a way uh, to balance out this payroll uh, listen, Jordan Poole has been an outstanding young player for this organization. He did not have uh, his best season last year. Certainly uh, some circumstances around that, certainly at the beginning of the year and all that he went through uh, with Draymond Green and the punch. Uh, but again, I think this is a play for this organization with Chris Paul, uh, who's owed $30 million this year. This is an expiring deal uh, for the Warriors. Uh, it gives them a chance uh, to bring in a player who, in Chris Paul, you are not asking him to carry a significant big role. There's plenty of great guard play here, but the, but the, certainly the role he could play could be significant as they try to get back into championship contention. And, you know, Mike Dunleavy Jr. and Joe Lake of their owner, you know, they, they've talked about, listen, wanting to still compete, but also the reality that uh, with this new salary cap, with uh, the payroll that has to eventually get reined in. Uh, four years, 140 million now off the books in Golden State. And part of what you see why draft picks going back to Washington in this is that kind of money. You saw it with Bradley Beal. This is a different time in the NBA with big, big contracts. And so you, the, the Warriors almost had to incentivize that a little bit uh, in getting off that much money. And Perk, uh, Chris Paul, 38, turns, turns 39 next May. Talking about just the type of role that he could play with this Warriors team, what do you envision that he can do with Golden State? He's going to fit in just fine. Um, the one thing that we saw over the last couple of years is that Chris Paul has shown us that he can actually play off the ball and be a capable knockdown three-point shooter. But I want to go back to Jordan Poole for yeah. a second. We saw the writing on the wall. We saw at times with Steph Curry was frustrated with him when he was taking shots that Steph should have felt like, that the Golden State Warriors felt like should have been in Steph's hands. We seen and we heard Draymond Green talk about how that incident basically broke up their locker room and they weren't going to win the championship. We saw the drop off and the great Kevin Garnett used to always say, watch the young players after they get their money and that's how you can see the real them. And to be honest, since Jordan got, since Jordan Poole got the bag, he's been 
been a completely different player. I think this is a right move for the Warriors, and I would love to see Chris Paul alongside uh, Steph Curry. That would be pretty dangerous. Yeah, he signed that four-year $128 million deal back in 2022. Well, I think it's a little unfair to be like, watch the player after he got his money. That is a very, very true thing. But I think in this situation, after you win a championship, you get your money, you get punched in the face, and now all of a sudden you're, you're pissed off. So I don't think that that's a great indicator. I will say this about Jordan Poole and about a lot of young players out there. If you're in a great situation and you have to recognize that very quickly you can end up on the Washington Wizards, no disrespect to them, in a rebuild space. So you can go and get a bunch of shots. No one will ever see you. You're not gonna, you're not gonna be on TV. You're gonna be a part of a rebuild. Or you can fix your face, you can fix your attitude and get back in line and compete for championships. So I think, you know, while this is unfortunate, um, you know, that they had to break up part of their young core, there were some money incentives on it. But ultimately, Chris Paul to the Warriors, I think that that is a great move for Chris Paul. I'm saying is his attitude was different. We saw it in the postseason. It had nothing to do with the punches. We saw the frustration with the shot selection he was taking. It had nothing to do with him getting punched. I agree. Everything about him saying, I got my bag, so I got a bigger role. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. And that's, I mean, you could go take it over KG. I'm just telling you what he told me, and that's what I said. He's an all time great. He's all the fame. I'm going to go listen to him. Yeah, listen, in this league, the only thing you are guaranteed is the money on the contract. You are not guaranteed where you're going to play unless you're Bradley Beal and you negotiate <laughs> yes. a no trade clause, mm -hmm. but that you are seeing fewer and fewer high level players go into free agency. You are signing the extension where you are and then essentially you go in the portal when you want out. Now, that's not what's happening with Jordan Poole. He's, he was traded, but I think this is the reality of the league. We are going to see, I think, a number of trades and, and among, among them some with contracts like Jordan Jordan Poole, even early in their career, starting out uh, on a new deal. Uh, but again, for Washington, he gets has a chance to be a cornerstone on a young team. They bring in Tyus Jones uh, from Memphis, uh, Jordan Poole. And so you start to see some younger uh, perimeter players and some picks. They've got uh, number eight tonight. Uh, they've got second round picks. And certainly they're in a position now. We'll still see what they're going to do with yeah. Kyle Kuzma. Right. There's still some. There, there's a lot of interest in re-signing Kyle Kuzma. Um, again, if you're the Wizards, that's an asset. You want to try to keep that uh, on your roster, and then maybe make a different decision down the line with them. And Kuzma is going to have a lot of free agent uh, uh, opportunities out there. Uh, but again, Jordan Poole uh, to the Washington Wizards for Chris Paul, remarkable. I actually Why are you I'm touching me. No one's touching you. Anyway, look, 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 I like this for the Wizards. I really do. Because now they have a legitimate young backcourt. We know what Tyus Jones can do. Mm -hmm. We know what Jordan Poole can do. So now, okay, you need a couple of threes, but you're building something. For the last, I want to say, three or four years with the Bradley Beal sweepstakes, and then you give them a no trade cause, and then you give them all the money, there is not a person in the NBA that had any idea what the Washington Wizards were doing the last three years. Right? I understand Bradley Beal needs to be there, but no player was going to go team up. You didn't have the assets to go bring somebody else in. You were in the biggest purgatory and then all of a sudden you have to trade Brad Bradley Beal to get off the contract for probably I don't want to say pennies on the dollar but somewhat close to get off the contract. So now you can see a clear plan in Washington and good for them in the organization. You you think Chris Paul can finally get his first championship with the Warriors? No, I don't. I mean, but it's still... <laughs> I got. I mean, you know I'm what? Just, I'm, you know what? what? There's a lot I'm, of hate in you and your heart. There's how? a lot I of hate in your I, heart, I said bro. I like love the move for CP3, but I mean, you still got the Nuggets and you got the Suns. The, the Warriors are not my favorite because they added CP3. I'm just saying, you got a lot of hate in your heart. No, I don't. I got a lot of love for everybody on this panel. That's a lie. But that's a lot of veteran presence, though. Chris Paul, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson. We'll see what happens with Draymond Green. As Woj said, a remarkable trade. The Washington Wizards are finalizing a deal to send Chris Paul to the Golden State Warriors for a package that includes Jordan Poole and picks. Woj, thank you so much for joining us. Maybe you'll come back the next block. We'll see. Yes. Picks 2030 Golden go. State first round pick, uh, 2022. 2027 second round pick to the Wizards. Um, this morning, the Lakers acquire the 40th pick in tonight's draft. What more can you tell us about that? Yeah, a chance for the Lakers. They go from 47 to 40. So right now, the Lakers are drafting at 17 and 40. Uh, they sent cash and the number 47 pick 
uh, to the Indiana Pacers. And I think this is a draft where a lot of teams see some value, a lot of value in the second round uh, and having second round picks financially when you are a team that's going to be in luxury tax, when you have a big payroll, your ability to hit on those picks and get some low cost talent that you can bring through and develop, it's invaluable when you are trying to build, maintain a contender with max level players, with guys like LeBron James, Anthony Davis, uh, that you're building around. I mean, yesterday, Perk, you said you would love to see Chris Paul uh, on the Lakers, but in, in terms of the Lakers' future and what they should be doing, you know, over the next uh, week or so, you know, what do you want to see from them? Well, I will first sort of uh, business is making sure that Austin Reeves doesn't go anywhere. I think when you look at the trust, not only that the Lakers have in him, but Darvin Ham and LeBron James. I haven't seen LeBron James like sit back and take a lesser role and defer to a person for as a playmaking ability since Kyrie Irving. And like when you watch them this postseason, the trust level that LeBron had in Austin Reeves, and he didn't disappoint him, I think that's the first priority of business is making sure that they get him penciled in and re-sign. No, I, I agree. When you're talking you do? about yeah, that's second yeah. time. No, I was talking about with minutes. I was talking about with Woj. Not you, bro. <laughs> I was talking about I agree with Woj. Listen, let's, let's slow down there, big fella. I mean, that's just smart. Just smart. Like, yeah, I agree He's with Woj. He's delivering facts. You're like, wow, Rich. <laughs> no wonder you were surprised, right? Okay. No, no. I I, I think when you look at the Lakers, I, obviously. Just because you're drafting guys, just because you're getting picks, doesn't necessarily mean you're going to keep them. It just means that you want a better look. And I like it. Like Woj said, getting from that 47 to close. Because you're getting closer to the first round. When you get to 40, you're getting closer to a first-round caliber pick. And we know, obviously, with Jokic, what he was able to do, there are gems in that second round. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.